Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Breakout Training Entered, the show where we talk about all things breakout training and more. And joining us today, of course, is Mr. Breakouts himself, Thomas Nesnador. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you very much, Andrew. And welcome, everybody. Mr. Breakouts is here. And as you can see, this is quite a premiere for you because a couple of things are different. So first of all, I'm not in my usual setup. And the reason is that I'm on a small holiday in Barcelona. So for the very first time, I'm streaming from a hotel, from outside of home, uh, and uh, with a brand new camera. So I hope everybody can see me well. And uh, second, and I'm going to share with you, I, I have to tell you guys what, I'm, what, what is it I'm going to do here in Barcelona. And I think you'll love it. And let me show you. So I have a special shoes like <laughs> yeah. this. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do here Wait, give me one second. I'll just show you. This is a very special invention. You have holes here at the bottom and yeah. you click roller skates there. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm very going nice. to roller skate Barcelona tomorrow. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to roller skate Barcelona. And that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so just to share, share something from my life with you guys. Well, that's, uh, it's good to hear that you're on a little holiday because we're all going on a holiday today. We're all heading to the European markets. Yes. <laughs> European holiday. <laughs> European holiday, yes. Yeah, that's great. So we've got some uh, hellos in the chat. Hey, Eric, good to see you. Ludwig, welcome. Hey, Mark. Olga, Chris, good day. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today on our little hey, hey guys. trip to Europe. Good to see you again. And actually, yeah. I can already see that, you know, some guys are from Europe. I know I recognize mm. the names. So we do have some uh, European audience here already. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to talk about something. Uh, quite frankly, Andrew, I yeah. have not seen anybody talking about European markets yet, which is quite surprising, right? Like it almost see, looks like we're on one of the very first on YouTube, if not the first one at least when it comes to breakout trading and futures markets, uh, I couldn't find anything uh, particularly uh, about European markets. So we might be the first, which is yeah. great. Yes. We like that. <laughs> so this is uh, obviously uh, part of our How to Make Breakout Trading Work series. Uh, this is, well, I think the second one, isn't it, Thomas? Because we've got one group left, I think, bonds. Yes. So we've done yes. all the others, indexes. Energies, mm -hmm. grains, softs, metals. Are there any others? <laughs> it's too early uh, in the morning for me. My brain isn't quite going yet. But I think we got those. Yeah. And currencies? Did we do? Yeah, we did currencies last currencies, week. So, currencies. Yeah. Uh, and I think you missed one more, which I don't remember. I think I did. But Doesn't I matter. Think of it now. <laughs> so we're going to talk about European markets. Yeah. And I think, I think this is really, this is pretty neat, actually, because... There are some specific, I, first of all, I don't really understand why people uh, ignore European futures because there's uh, one thing is that you can get an access to a couple of very good European uh, European markets from trade station very easily. So, you know, you don't even need to uh, leave the trade station environment and you already do have an access to very good European markets. And second, believe or not, but we have European markets, futures markets with uh, long, long of uh, data history, like 10, 15 years. Uh, so basically, there's no reason to um, ignore European markets. And of course, again, guys, for you, I'm talking about um, futures European markets, uh, which are future markets, uh, which have been established in Europe and are supposed to be traded in Europe. But uh, obviously, the world is in interconnected nowadays, uh, and also the the, the German Eurex, Eurex, Eurex and uh, I think even part of the London Exchange was bought by CME Group. So uh, it's mm. basically CME can give us an access to a uh, lot of um, corners of the world, uh, um, including um, European markets. Uh, so in in general, trading European markets is as easy as trading let's say american indexes it's very easy yeah yeah um well before we get started how about um we've got a couple more comments in the chat so let's say hello to bill g'day bill uh bill said i like barcelona i've been there three times um nice 
Hey, Bill. Yeah, Barcelona is a great city. And uh, bonjour yeah. from Pascal. Apologies for my French. It's I'm not very good at French, but uh, welcome, oh, Pascal. Pascal. Hey. <laughs> bonjour. Good to see you here. Bonjour. And, um, nice to see you. Bill wants to know if we're going to be talking about Asian markets. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, maybe. Because we do actually <laughs> trade Asian markets, or I trade Asian markets using these techniques. So maybe we'll think about that. Um, and then uh, Sean said, European markets, do you mean Euro Bund or UK gilts? I think I'm we're going to get to that, you. aren't we? Yes. Right. yes. So let's yes. get started then, because yes. I'm excited yeah, yeah, and yeah. Sean's excited. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so let's bring up the presentation and let's say, so So first of all, there's a bunch of European markets. Like if you go to uh, Eurex, uh, if you find Eurex exchange um, on the internet, there it, it's quite incredible. They are adding more and more tradable futures markets uh, mm -hmm. and there's a really a bunch of markets to trade. Now, you, you already know that we have kind of a, like a selection protocol here. Uh, so first of all, we only favor markets where we have a, enough of a, a quality data history, which is uh, which means that we we prioritize markets that's been here for a while and that that's been proven and with all this data history. Uh, and um, second, uh, quite frankly, I do not have experience with all the European markets yet. Uh, maybe I, as an European, I should have gotten deeper into this topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, Shame on me. Uh, however, uh, so when we when we talk uh, when we talk about European markets, uh, basically uh, the, these five are uh, evergreens: uh, the Dow Jones, uh, Eurostox 50, uh, FESX, uh, DAX. Like DAX is a total. That's the number one index futures uh, in Europe, except for London for the UK. But overall, like that's the number one. You, of course, Eurobonds, FGBL, uh, Euro BOBL, I don't know even what it means, FGBM, and Euro, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, SHATS, uh, FCBS. Now we have, uh, these all are great markets. You have data history, you have quality data, it's been here around proven markets. Uh, however, we have in our hedge fund we have direct experience with just four of these, uh, 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 three of these markets, and I'll uh, tell you in a second which markets uh, these are. And uh, we developed a lot of strategies on three on these three markets. So I'm particularly going to talk about three specific European markets tonight. But what I have to uh, what what I also have to say that uh, Europe is definitely not behind when it comes to the latest greatest trend, which is uh, micros. And uh, actually, uh, DAX already has got not even its mini version, but also micro version, which is a great news because I, I'm going to talk about DAX uh, a lot to, uh, tonight because there are some really, really neat things about DAX. Like it's, it is so overlooked and so amazing market. So I'll explain all these uh, specialties. And we also have a uh, micro, new micro for the uh, Eurostock uh, 50. So very good news is that these uh, markets, these European markets are highly accessible even for pretty small accounts, which I personally think is magical. I didn't expect, you know, like Europe is usually behind with this stuff, uh, behind the US. Uh, we're lagging uh, a little bit. Uh, and I was surprised to see that we do already have micro and mini versions for these leading European indexes and futures markets. So it's amazing, like the opportunity is here. We can trade European markets like this, even with small accounts. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let, let me share with, with which uh, markets we do have, uh, we, we do have experiences in our hedge fund. And uh, actually you'll be quite surprised how many strategies we have for European markets. So if we can move on, please Andrew, thank you. Uh, so we particularly have uh, experience with uh, DAX, uh, FESX, and uh, FGBL. If I read it well, can you just confirm, uh, Andrew, please? Because it's very tiny on my travel. Yes, yes. FESX. FESX and then FGBL. Yep. Yes, that's right. And FGBL. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now, when I had a look into the database, so we have staggering 215 breakout strategies from European markets, which is quite a lot. Like uh, I didn't expect so many uh, European strategies, uh, but then it struck me why. And it, it's a reason which I also shared, I think, in Empower Trader. Uh, 
and there so so there are a couple of really really great things about European markets that people are not getting and uh, and that's a big pity because these are the reasons why you should be really really uh, interested in this market so first of all for algorithmic trading these markets are still quite inefficient what it means like when we talk about uh, US indexes like in s and p or Dow Jones or whatever uh, there's, there is already and there's been for a long time going on an algorithmic battle, which means that these markets are highly efficient, which means it can get harder not only to get an edge, but also to maintain an edge for longer than, let's say, one or one and a half year. Surprisingly, when it comes to European markets, there's still not uh, this... Uh, um, level of algorithmic battle, uh, at least in markets like FGBL, and these markets can be really, really inefficient, which means it's super easy uh, to find edge in these markets. And for example, the FGBL, you can see we have 102 strategies on FGBL, and we, we literally created them like this. Like It's one of the markets where, where we had to put, put almost least effort to create a lot of good viable strategies. And the reason is because there's these markets are not uh, efficient enough yet. Like it, it's really there. It's almost like there is kind of a uh, edge just in approaching this market because um, it just, it's not be, it, it has not been yet um, uh, utilized fully. And that's why we have an opportunity uh, to create something there pretty quickly. But we also have uh, we, we also have built on these other uh, markets, FESX, uh, the Eurostox, and the DAX, uh, which got this um, FDAX. Uh, <clears throat> it's called FDAX. Uh, the symbol is FDAX, but it's the, the regular DAX 30, uh, the German index. And the, so, so, so that's the first thing, like the efficiency versus inefficiency. The, it, it really is a big deal. The, the other great thing is, and this is something that uh, I think that a lot of people don't understand as well is that it's like trading a European market is almost like trading two in one because European markets, uh, they open usually about 8 a.m. European time. Now, just to give you some perspective in Europe, the U.S. markets uh, usually uh, open around 3.30 p.m. And that means that about 8 a.m., uh, for example, DAX uh, opens about a.m. and then it trades until 3.30 p.m. It trades its own, let's say, European uh, session uh, where, where a big part of financial European system uh, is engaged in these European markets and they trade and there's a volatility, there's volume, uh, there's tradability, there's movement. And then 3.30 it pretty much starts matching the U.S. Um, session. And it, it li it's literally like there's a second completely independent uh, session. And it, in, in a sense, um, trading European markets, it's almost like if you would connect two different markets into one and you're getting double the exposure, double the possibilities to trade these markets. Uh, and it means, and I'll show you, I'll show you, it means some extra benefit. For example, you can create, you can have a very high uh, sample size on uh, on markets like FDAX because you can literally trade du trade double session. Uh, so you trade double, even if it's just one market. Then of course you have quite interesting correlations because you're trading completely outside of the US hours, like completely. And then of course, because you can have a double trading session and you trade double, uh, you can have more, you can make more money on one market. And I'll show you how DAX is probably the most uh, profitable, potentially profitable market I've ever seen. And I'll explain you why. Uh, so, so it's like two in one trading European markets. It's almost like two in one. And I think these are great, great uh, benefits. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to see how you split up those sessions because as you mentioned, it can sometimes be like you're trading two different markets. So, I'm going to ask you about that, but I know it's coming, so I don't want to jump ahead too yeah, far. <laughs> it is coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, no comments in the chat about this so far. If any questions, let mm -hmm. us know. I just posted a question. If anyone here is currently trading any EU markets, if you are, be interested to know which ones. 
Uh, if not, that's okay. <laughs> Thomas is going to give you loads of tips today. Yeah. All right, Thomas, I think we can move on. Okay, so let's get back to presentation, please. So, so now you sure. understand that there are a lot of benefits in, in, in this European market. And now, now, now here is the, so, so you already know that you're dealing with something which is out of the mainstream interest, alleluia, whatever is outside of mainstream interest, that's always the best thing to trade. Uh, second, you already know that uh, you have inefficiency. That means that you can really create powerful strong edge. And third, mm. you already know that you're pretty much uh, getting uh, two different sessions in one. That means that it's almost like double trading in one market. Now, let's let's get uh, closer to these uh, uh, time sessions and time templates. And I, <laughs> so, so let's start with these session uh, with these sessions because this is like uh, like any market, even European markets, they almost almost uh, trade 24 uh, 5 uh, nowadays so so they do have this um, continuous uh, over day overnight session however uh, as i already said uh, uh, the real thing how it works is that it, it follows the european session which uh, and usually banks uh, uh, open about 8 8 30 9, p, 9 a.m it depends which country it's different in czech republic different in spain different in france different in germany uh, and uh, then they uh, trade their own session until uh, 3 30 and then 3 30 you can start seeing there is a uh, some uh, almost correlation going on with uh, with the um, US markets. Uh, in a sense, you could almost, sometimes you could almost do an arbitrage between these, these two, but that's a different story. So the point is that uh, you have two possibilities how to create trading strategy. The first possibility is just follow this um, US market session. That, that would mean uh, 3.30 to uh, 10 p.m. German time, which which is pretty much 9:30 to uh, 4 p.m. Chicago time, and if you only if you take any of these European markets and you only limit to this session, you already uh, have a, a you can already create a totally tradable strategy, and we created a lot of strategies just for these U.S. sessions uh, because in these U.S. sessions uh, still it looks like there can be more volatility and more of a movement. Uh, compared to the morning session, because some markets can get a little bit uh, lazier in the morning, in the European morning, but it, it's not a rule of thumb. It, it, it really depends. Now, if you want to get both sessions, you pretty much expand the session and you start uh, around 8 a.m. Uh, German European time. Now, this number, 8 a.m., is really, really, I would say, very benevolent because we experimented with uh, 7, 7.20, 8, 8.30, 9 a.m. And it pretty much doesn't matter. Uh, overall, uh, bankers, they start working about 8.30. Like I, I, I suspect the first trades are being made around 8.30 a.m. or 9 uh, a.m. Uh, European times. So you, ha you have a potential to try different time templates here, and it doesn't matter whether you start 8 or 8.30 or 9 it's just you can have a look at volume and you can play with this a uh, little bit and uh, it's up to you. Uh, but the point is that uh, pretty much whether you uh, trade the US uh, part only or the European plus uh, um, US part, uh, it's completely same development process. Like we do not do anything differently or especially different. The only thing is that uh, we can allow up to three trades per day uh, if we have the whole session uh, and we can use uh, some profit targets so we can get during that day, we can get into, let's say, FDAX uh, market two, even three times. Uh, so it really depends. But overall, uh, it's up to you. If you if you expand the, this whole session, uh, then, as I said, you can have a lot of trades and you definitely get some benefits. And I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you a comparison of a strategy with U.S. only and European plus U.S. session as well. So do we have any questions regarding these time templates? Um, no, we don't have a question, but we've got a comment from Sean. Uh, when I asked if anyone trades EU markets, Sean said uh, he trades the Eurobund mainly on daily time frame. I must say it is very trendy. Yeah, I think I think this is another good thing. It's like these markets are really trendy, really trendy. Yeah. And that's all we've got. 
So no questions on time sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let, let's let's move to uh, let's move to uh, um, the uh, time frames. Uh, so I went through our database, <laughs> and I, I know I know this is this is a little bit funny, uh, but um, you know, with a lot of markets, I presented two or even three different uh, time frames, which we had to uh, come to to be able. To develop a profitable trading strategy, meaning with a lot of uh, other futures markets, you pretty much try try uh, time uh, frame one doesn't stick. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. And if you're lucky, after a couple of weeks or months, you have two, three uh, highly preferable uh, time frames, which you and then you just stick with these two, three, and that's what you use for your strategy development. And we discussed this in previous parts a couple of times already. Now, with these European markets, these European markets are so, I would say, efficient that in our inefficient, sorry, that in our database, I could not find any other time frame. Literally, for each of these three markets, we only have one time frame. And that's because uh, the first time frame we tried, we were already so successful with that we became a little bit lazy and we didn't have to try any other anymore which is quite ridiculous right like it's the right opposite <laughs> of all other markets but we literally tried fdax 60 minutes fesx 80 fgbl 90 and we immediately right away were successful with these three trees <laughs> big way we we after a short time we loaded our database with what you saw like 200 plus uh, strategies and we said that's it. That's all we need right now. Let's move to other markets. There's not even point for us trying different uh, time frames because we got what we have. Like we have great strategies. Like all the all the whistles and uh, fireworks. It was there. Mm. So that's crazy. That that again says how unexplored these European markets are. How underrated, underappreciated these markets are because it's something that. If, if I would say something like this with any other futures markets uh, in the US, it would sound like a joke or laziness or poor trading approach or unprofessional approach or I don't know what. With European markets, it is like this. Magic, isn't it? <laughs> so, Thomas, if you were to have a guess at a lower time frame on, say, for example, the DAX on a 15-minute, uh, I know you just said that you haven't tested it, but given the the characteristics of that market, what do you think? What kind of results do you think you'd get by a lower time frame? That, that's an interesting idea. I have to say that out of these three markets, uh, DAX is probably the hardest one because it's becoming mm -hmm. more efficient, uh, and I'll explain why. Because it, it's a crazy market, uh, but I I suspect that you could be successful even with. 15, 20, 10 minutes, like I can see it. it, especially if in the other FESX, FGBL, I can see why not. Um, hmm. Maybe the question will, the only question is what your average trade will be. Like with any market, you might fight a little bit with the average trade. But um, yeah, I, yeah. I, would, I would believe it should be possible in these markets. Hmm. Yeah. We've got a comment here from, <laughs> Bill in the chat. I heard I heard that since Brexit, the London markets have lost its importance to Frankfurt. Please expand how that may affect our retail trading. Um, quite frankly, uh, Bill, I don't know because uh, after the Brexit, all trading in London, it, everything in it, it's a, in a mess, and there are, you know, it's really. You have no idea what became legally with trading after the split. Like my friend trading with uh, IB, he had his IB account in uh, Interactive Brokers. I mean, he had it in London. They kicked, kicked him off, closed his positions, uh, liquidated all his positions, didn't allow him to trade a lot of uh, markets. Uh, wow. I Right now, I don't know. Uh, I don't care about uh, London markets at all uh, until the legislation is clear. And... I personally think that nobody knows. I think that it's all in a, it's still in all in transition phase, and it's still in, uh, you know, a lot of gray area. And I think it will need a couple of years uh, to clarify 
So for me, as a non-UK resident, I definitely uh, have uh, legal challenges uh, to trade uh, in the UK. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know. Right now, I don't know what, what's going on with London. We need to wait a little bit more. Hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I mean, there's still not a clear way to send Amazon uh, packages from Amazon from UK to Europe anymore. Like even this sim- these simple stuff are super complicated right now. So mm. we, let's yeah. see. Let's see. I think one or two more years, and then we will see. Yeah, yeah. Bill said that explains the confusion. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of confusion. Good comment. Uh, good comment, Bill. I never actually considered that. So. Um. All right, that's it, Thomas. If you want to move uh, move on, yeah. Uh, let me just I just can see that my camera color got really weird, uh, but I'm sh- I'm not sure if I can do with it. It's big because of oh maybe a little bit better now. Okay, we've got uh, a, okay. Actually, before we yeah. move on, we got a question from Olga. Good day, Olga. Uh-huh. Um, do micro decks and stocks have enough volume for trading? Uh, quite honestly, Olga, I didn't have time to check because uh, when I was preparing this uh, this episode, I, I I didn't know they had micro. I, I, you know, you know how it goes in Europe. Like we're always behind with this stuff. So when I was uh, I was just uh, you know out of interest, I I, I went through to uh, the uh, uh, German Bors 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 um, Borsa, the German exchange. Web page and I realized, wow, they have micro. This is amazing. Like, how is that even possible? Are we talking about the same Europe? But I don't know what the volume is. But I, you know, especially for that, I suspect it will be good uh, because it's it's super popular market. I, and if it's not good now, it will be very soon. So you yeah. might need to go to Eurex uh, web page and have a look. Yeah, yeah, we trade the uh, micro DAX um, through Striker. And um, for a cube trading, and we haven't noticed any any crazy slippage. So I don't recall the yeah. volume off the top of my head, but it seems to be okay for DAX. Yeah, we yeah. trade stocks, so I don't know about that one. Yeah, I... yeah, absolutely. I, th- I imagine uh... because of the the contract size and you know the uh, the uh, margin requirements for DAX might be a little large for some people. So I think there's been quite a good adoption of micro DAX, but yeah, mm-hmm. Nick. Nick is saying micro DAX. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let, let's let's now talk about, uh, and this is the interest. I think this is the most interesting part because I want to talk about these examples, and uh, I'm I'm going to talk about these sessions, and I'm I'm going to explain something very specific about uh, DAX. So. Uh, Let's, let's start with this example. So I already said that pretty much if you expand the session in Europe plus, plus US, uh, you're getting like double exposure, double session in one market. So first of all, I created an example here where, with DAX where uh, there are both sessions and I want to show you. So in this example, this is the first example. Uh, it's a swing strategy and it's the regular session only. And if you have a, uh, the US session, which means uh, the Chicago 9.30 to... 3.30 p.m. or something like this, the, the, the regular uh, Chicago session, which is 3.30 uh, European time, German time, until 10 p.m. Germany. Now, now this if, if you uh, focus on this session, it pretty much works like any other index uh, on futures. You have great strategies, good strategies. Like, I mean, it, 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 it just, it's very similar. However, if you have a look on this, particular example, and this is a very ordinary uh, DAX strategy on this Chicago uh, time. You, it, it, if you will pay attention, there is there is something that probably will call your attention already that, that stands out. Uh, so what, Andrew, let me know, do you know what it is? Something that stands out. Yeah, if you would compare this to you, although it's the same, uh, session like Chicago, if you would compare it with other US indexes, what is it that st- stands out with this European index? Um, well, let's me see. There's a couple of things that jump out to me immediately. 
the mm -hmm. the average trade is quite high, which then of course yeah. is in, in, um, impacts the net, the net profit. Also, the percent profitable is quite high for breakout trading. I guess it depends what kind of exits mm -hmm. you've had. But I'm guessing you'll probably want to point to average trade. Am I guessing correctly? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. So, so okay. Average. Yeah. Because there, there are two things. Those first one, you, you're right. Like two, 205 uh, on indexes in general, it's really high. Like you know, mm. you don't get this uh, even with Nasdaq probably. So it's really high. But then if you pay attention a little bit, uh, then there's one other particularly interesting thing. And that is that if we, this is a 10 years history, as always. One, one futures contract. So the pre net profit is always per 10 years. Uh, one uh, contract. Uh, so if you trade 10 contracts, it would be 1.6 million. Uh, now, we, we always develop and test strategies on 10 years history, as you already know from our breakout strategies masterclass. Now, if you guys ever tried uh, U.S. markets, then your net profit per 10 years history will be usually around 100, 120, 140K. Yep. Here we can see 163, which already is exceptionally high. I'm not even sure if we have uh, in our database a strategy which would have uh, over 160k on an index on 10 years history. So it's not only the average trade, which is exceptionally high, it's also, also the net profit, which is definitely higher. It, it's on the very high side uh, uh, compared to basically any future market. And now, now here is the crazy part. So if you think about uh, the most profitable markets, uh, futures markets that you ever experienced, and which markets would that be? Like markets that on the 10 years is historic give you really, really high net profit. Which markets do, uh, would you think about? Um, so you're just talking about just U US markets? Yes, US markets. The Hang, Seng, US market. Hang Seng moves pretty nicely as well. But uh, yeah, you're just staying US to US. Probably metals are pretty good. Metals, gold, yeah, gold can gold. be pretty high net profit. Um, yeah, sometimes energies, maybe crude. Energies. If you're doing swing, crude, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now, 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 when, when exactly? So now, if you just recall from your memory, if you build a strategy on gold or on crude oil, and you have a really good strategy, what is the peak net profit for that ten years period? Um, well, maybe probably. 100 to 120 maybe 140 exactly wouldn't wouldn't exactly. be at, not usually over 160 yeah. exactly not usually over, uh, over 160 now yeah. get this dax is the only market in the universe where i i literally saw uh net profit for 10 years up to $300,000 whoa <laughs> which is unheard of so this market is crazy. Like FDAX is totally craziest market out of all future market. It is crazier than gold. It is crazier than crude oil. It is crazier than natural gas. And it's the, it's the only market where you can get absolutely top peak uh, performance in the amount of absolute dollars on average per year, which can be double compared to any other market. But yeah. you will pay with big, way bigger drawdowns as well. I saw strategies on DAX, uh, DAX that could make uh, 25, 30K per year. That means about 250, 300,000 uh, for 10 years period. But drawdown could be 30, 40K. So very high drawdowns as well. So this is a very serious market for big guys, like for hedge funds. This is a crazy, crazy market. Like, this this market for a hedge fund can really leverage the capital. It's very tradable, a lot of contracts, and it, it's super wild. Uh, that's why I think it it can be really interesting to focus on the micro version because you still can get a lot of uh, benefits from from these uh, crazy markets. Now, of course, when I'm talking about is high profit, uh, then I'm also talking about the whole session. So as I said, now you have double session and because you have double session, that's why you can really push the peak performance up, up to 300,000. So this is the second uh, chart I have here, the second uh, slide. And here you can see 215K per 10 year history, Andrew. 
Nice. Very Isn't nice. it? Yeah. And have a look on the sample size. It's crazy. Almost wow. <laughs> 2,200 rate. So, so that's, that's what I mean when I say you're literally getting double. If you expand the whole session, you double the whole experience. You double the number of trades. But this is insane sample size, like insane. It's literally you trade every day and you double the net profit, like 215. And we have higher. We had 250, 260, up to almost 300,000, which I saw in our database. So, so that's all doable only and only with DAX. And this is very heavily traded strategy. I think there is some small profit target or something like that. And mm. even with this, the average trade is $100 per trade, which is still really high for uh, a strategy which trades very frequently and goes for smaller exits, uh, faster exits, uh, faster profits. Uh, so again, DAX is the only market that offers possibilities that you cannot get on any any other market uh, future market in the us potentially you can get it in asia as andrew said on the hang Seng, that i have no experience with but uh, in the us there is no market where you could could that you could push so far like like that so i, I think it's really interesting market like super interesting market awesome we got a couple of comments in here thomas i know you've got a couple more examples which we'll get to in a sec um mark would like to know is there a vix equivalent in tradestation for dax or other euro markets uh, i don't know like uh, for the if you want to trade a dax just the regular us session the chicago session you use the normal vix like the, the, the typical one if there's a already european version of vix for the whole european session i doubt that I've never heard about it. I would have to investigate, I'm not, but I'm not aware. I imagine there probably would be, but I don't know for sure. I've never yeah. looked. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then a question from The Undead. <laughs> Love the name. Welcome, Undead. Not sure if it was asked before, but where can you get EU stock market data on individual stocks? On individual stocks, uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure about that. I, it depends on your broker. Like any good broker should give you an access. A lot of brokers. So. I, I don't trade individual stocks. I only trade future markets. So I never had a need to uh, investigate. But every decent broker can get you. Like, I mean, even my bank get in Spain can, can get me access to all the Spanish stocks. <laughs> and and I'm, I mean, that. Any good bro broker, uh, especially if you're in Europe, should give you access to this. I don't think it's available in TradeStation, is it? In, mm, I'm not in sure. In the US I version. Because I think there's an international version of TradeStation as well, isn't there, that I definitely, plugs into I definitely IB, maybe? Know. Yeah, IB, exactly. IB, yeah. definitely. You can, with IB, inter interactive, you can definitely trade uh, single uh, European stocks almost from any country. Yeah. All right, uh, I did said thanks. Yeah. So you, we can move okay. on to the next example. Yeah. So 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 uh, now the, the, here the, here's one. So uh, this is quite interesting about the wildest market ever by big margin. The on the contrary, the FEX and FGBL are one of the laziest, most boring markets ever. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, but, you know, now, now Andrew, if you look at this FESX, the stats, what is it that brings up your attention? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well net profit was the first one because it's the top of the list, yeah. 25K for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. But now, like, let's have a look on the drawdown. Like, have you ever experienced drawdown below 4,000 no, on the US market, low, it? it's, it's <laughs> really, really low, really low. So uh, that's the benefit of these other two markets, the FESX and the FGBL. These markets, like, F first of all, FGBL has got insane liquidity, but insane. It goes to millions and millions. It's, it's so tradable. You can trade probably tens of thousands of contracts there. And second, these markets are pretty slow, but really good for small accounts. Because no, you will not become a billionaire. No, you will not make killing like in DAX. 
but these markets can be traded with small stop losses, small drawdowns, will not give you too much of a hit, will not give you too much of a pressure, and still a very good market. So uh, this is a typical strategy that we have for FESX, nothing extraordinary, just a regular normal strategy. And then we have on the next slide, if we can move on, we have FGBL, uh, 90 minutes, again, uh, four or 5,000 uh, um, drawdown, which is, and there it can be even lower. It can be about 3,000. Uh, so uh, again, pretty good for smaller accounts. It's, you can do, you can have a lot of fun with this market, a lot of learning, uh, not, not too much of a pressure. Uh, these markets work pretty well. Uh, and you, you know, even, even this looks like a super small profit in our hedge fund, we can literally take thousands of contracts if we want to, because the liquidity of on FGBL, it's really insane. So, uh, again, very specific, very particular markets, uh, all, all three of them, but very tradable, very doable, uh, very easy to find uh, an edge or breakout trading strategy. And you can you can have both. You can have super exciting, super fancy, super hyped uh, DAX, or you can ha have this slow, steady, or almost lazy, but uh, pretty predictable, pretty inefficient uh, markets like FGBL and uh, FESX. So I think I think really a lot of lot of good potential here. Yeah, um, we got a couple of questions in the chat. Let's put this one up on the screen from Mahad. What's the difference between average trade net profit and average winning trade? Uh, the average winning, uh, so, so um, you, the average net profit is uh, the whole, uh, it, it's the net profit divided by all the trades, whereas uh, average winning versus average losing trade is just uh, all the winning trades. Uh, it's a sum of profit of all, all winning trades divided by the number of winning trades only. So it, it's basically, it's exactly what it says, like, what is the average winning trade? What is the average losing trade? And what is the average trade for both of them combined? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> here's a question from Eric, which is kind of a couple of questions all wrapped into one. So first of all, um, how many ticks do you generally use uh, to stress test these markets? And I guess the second part of that question is, how do you stress test these markets? Um, do you compare European indexes to US indexes or what do you do there? So maybe let's start for that and then we'll come to the second part. Yeah, th this is a tricky one. So first of all, um, that's why we started uh, the FDAX. The, the reason why we started with the US session only is because of course we could stress test it on uh, US markets. Uh, so so um, that's something you can do. Now, uh, when it comes when 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 it comes to FESX or especially FGBL, uh, the truth is that these markets are still so inefficient. That means the edge is still so powerful there that you all, you don't really need to stress stress, stress them. Uh, the re as I said, the reason is because you're working with very from the algorithmic uh, point of view, you're working with very underrated, underdeveloped market. Uh, it's it's so like it works so well there that you don't need to stress test them. The FESX and FGBL, you you just don't need to. It's it's so exceptional. Right? It's so different. So we, as you can see, we cheat this one a little bit for a reason. Yeah, Holger actually came up with an interesting idea. Let me put this one up on the screen about stress testing. How about DAX versus stocks? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, any idea like this is definitely worth testing. Uh, and mm. don't get me wrong, we do have uh, some cross-validation on different markets in our database. Uh, it is just that we don't pay, pay attention to them. Like we Right now, we don't. So, yeah, uh, can, this is a good idea, actually. Uh, Olga, mm. definitely something doable as well. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, now, there was a second part to Eric's question. Let me go back to this. Um, have you have you developed successful day trading strategies on them? 
uh, we don't have any in our database. Uh, so I don't know if we didn't even try uh, or if we couldn't. I assume like for FESX and FGBL, you probably will not develop it because you will suffer with low average trade. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's a viable option. For FDAX, I think it's very viable to create a day trading strategy. It should be possible. It should yeah. be possible. I, I I used to, when I used to trade discretionary, I used to trade uh, DAX as well as a day trader. And it, it was totally day tradable, day tradable. So I, I assume that should be possible. Yeah. All right, we've got a question here from ASF. Uh, how much are your average cost per trade for one contract on DAX, for example? Contract is about 350K euro, if I'm correct. Uh, I don't know how big the contract is. Uh, like the transactional cost is just the commission per one contract is about four or five US dollars, something like that. The very low. It's it's not. We don't even pay pay attention how low it is. So it's, it's normally DAX. It's uh, the commission. It's about five dollars round turn. So it's very low. Do you notice much slippage in the in the DAX? Uh, yes, in DAX you definitely will have a slippage uh, mm -hmm. about one tick on entry, one tick on entry, because it can be sometimes very volatile, sometimes yeah. even bigger. Like we we did experience even six, seven, eight. Like on DAX you definitely will exp experience uh, slippage, definitely. But also DAX is, it's got very very high average trade, so uh, it, so uh, that's it, it's it's all right. Like it, it can absorb uh, these higher slippages. Uh, the thing about FGBL, uh, it's one of the markets that you can literally trade with limit how liquid it is. So you will have uh, hmm. very low, almost non-slippage on these markets. It's so liquid. And uh, we tested it with limit orders and all of them filled uh, successfully. It's crazy. It's crazy liquid. Yeah. Okay. Question or maybe a comment here from Sean. I like boring markets as long as they're trendy. Did currencies yeah, yeah. in the past and they're wild and the news can screw things up easily. So do you take into account the news in the European markets, especially like things that move pretty quick, like the DAX? Uh, we don't. We don't. Mm. But uh, yeah, you made a point that uh, sometimes these, if, if something comes uh, to, especially for DAX, if some major information comes in, then it can really become very quickly, very volatile. And then as I said, you can have a, uh, occasional, but very occasional, very big slippage. Uh, I think we experienced it even something like 10, 10 ticks, like something wild. Wow. It was like, wow, I, I, I never seen it like this. But also on the positive side, not only on the negative mm. side. So, yes, you know, it's a, it's, it's, DAX is definitely a market for the biggest boys. It's the most craziest, uh, wildest, and potentially profitable market out there so far from my knowledge. So if you if you trade if you want to trade DAX, you need to be careful and you need to get ready for everything. That that it is it is the way it is. It just it's a market for big boys, literally. Unless you trade the micro version, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and then we've got a comment in the chat. This is uh, Neil helping uh, Mahad. Net profit equals oh, wins minus losses. Average trade is net profit divided by the number of trades. Average win is the win dollar divided by the number of winning trades. So thanks for helping out there, Neil. Appreciate that. Thank um, you, Neil. So I'm just scanning the chat. It looks like we've covered all the questions for now. So mm -hmm. uh, if you've got any more questions, please post them in the chat. And in the meantime, Thomas, how about we go to the quote of the show? What <laughs> That's do you think? a funny one. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> I was searching for quotes and I found this fantastic quote. Europe is a, always a good idea. And I think it's so, so, so on spot when we talk about European markets. I believe that when it comes to markets, Europe is always a good choice, always a good idea. You'll never go to get, get wrong with uh, uh, including European markets. Uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, you'll never make a mistake including European markets into your portfolio. And I'm not saying it as a European patriot. I'm saying it as an objective <laughs> tra trader. 
All right. It, it feels like that's from a movie, but I can't quite place it. So do you remember mm. where that quote came from? Is it from a movie? Europe is always I a don't good know. idea. I don't know. I don't know. I just it's... saw it on the, on the internet. I was like, yeah, that's the quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Nice quote there. So um, let's, um, before we have some final uh, wrap, wrapping up of questions, I'm just checking the chat. Nothing yet. Mark is having a good laugh. Maybe he recognizes the quote. So, um, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, thanks for you. Uh, joining us today, um, please remember to give us a thumbs up in the video, ding, if you enjoyed it, um, because it helps us to spread the word a little bit more and lets the YouTube algorithm know that the quality of the information Thomas is sharing is pretty high, and I'm quite inspired to test some more European markets over the coming weeks. So what do you think, guys? Who's going to be testing European markets um, in the coming weeks? Let us know in the chat. We've got a comment here from... Bill, this is an interesting one, Bill, about the war in the Ukraine. How do you think this is going to be affecting trading, especially, I guess, in the European markets because it's in Europe? Do you think there's going to be any long-term effects for the markets? Who knows? We will see. Uh, um, of course, it is impacting volatility. It mm. always does impact volatility. Yeah. So, of course, we are in a turbulent uh, regime a little bit right now and we can see big volatility and uh, ups and downs um, but you know it's, it's just part of trading i had a presentation in the master class we we did with andrew i think three months ago when we were talking about crisis and and i went back to history with many other crises and like everything is repeating itself we had it in the past already so just part of the game we do have crisis and and challenges and volatility and high volatility, low volatility. Uh, but of course, it is impacting for sure. It is. Yeah, actually, we had, um, so as part of our uh, elite program in BTA, which is like a one-year mastermind program for our most advanced traders, we actually had a special guest, Linda Rashke, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, one of the questions to Linda was about, um, you know, what's, what's going to happen in the markets and you know, a broker's going to go bust and, you know, all these um, questions about, you know, fear. And mm -hmm. and Linda's, Linda's comments were basically that you can't let that, um, you know, be your focus. You've, you know, things are happening yeah. all the time in the markets and you've just got to look at it from the point of opportunity and, you know, yeah. these types of things. You know, there is a lot of volatility in some of the markets. Uh, it can be risky, but it, there's also a lot of opportunity there. So, um, her comments were basically, yeah, just just <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> you know, don't let it ruin what you're trying to do. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But just, uh, you know, focus on the opportunity rather than the, the uh, you know, the negative side effects of things like that. So Exactly. If, if you remember that presentation, Andrew, uh, for the Breakout Strategies Masterclass we did, I think it was January or February, we presented so many, uh, you know, things that have never happened before. Uh, and like we had every year, there was something new and how this will affect and traders were, were you know, uh, like scared and panicking and what will happen and how this will impact. And this is different and this is different time. And, you know, when you present 10, 20 uh, happenings like this in a row, then you're almost like, who cares? Like literally, who cares? Like we yeah. have we have this special once a life uh, circumstances in the history. We have them every year. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's brilliant what uh, Linda said because exactly, it is what it is. It's part of the game and the world we live in. Yep, there's, there have been plenty of wars in the past and there will be more in the future, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we just got to learn to deal with it, I guess, you know, uh, from a market's perspective anyway. Mm. Um, okay, we've got a couple more comments here, Thomas, and then we'll wrap this one up. So this, here's an interesting one from Sean which I don't think we've considered, but maybe we should. Will we have one session on Asian markets like the Hang Seng, Nikkei, or Nifty? Um, that decision, maybe... it's not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I trade those markets. I, I don't trade the Nifty, but I trade the Hang Seng and uh, Singapore Index, the, the Nikkei, and uh, the, the SPY, which is the Australian 200 Index. So <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe we should think about uh, doing a session on that if people are interested. Uh, because this uh, 
you know, this breakout masterclass framework that Thomas teaches in uh, BTA works everywhere. So we've seen it work in Europe, works in the US, works in Australia, works in Asian markets. So uh, that's what uh, we love about it. One model, any market, and it works. Any time yeah. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> Let's have a quick sip of water. And then Bill says, I like what, uh, I like Linda Rashke and what she said, yeah. It's very wise. She's had a lot of years in the markets and, the, and had to, uh, you know, experience a lot of things. So, all right, Thomas, well, it looks like that's it for today. So do you have any closing comments before we finish this one up? Ah, uh, I thought the quote was the closing comment. Oh. <laughs> Guys, you'll never go wrong with Europe. That is my patriotic <laughs> closing comment. <laughs> all right, sounds good. So thank you very much for joining us today, everyone. Got a lot of good questions thank in you. the chat and um, a lot of good uh, comments as well. So thanks for joining us. And uh, Thomas, any clues? <laughs> Actually, I told, I gave it away at the start, didn't I? We got one more, apart from maybe Asian markets, but we got one more uh, group that we're going to talk about. And what is that? Make sure you know what we maybe have two because one we so so the hardest one. This one is the one I wanted to leave as the very very last one, and it's the hardest one. And it's bonds. Like bonds are super super hard uh, hard. So I wanted to leave bonds for the last one. But then I I, I uh, realized that we didn't go through meat, but I don't even know if oh, yeah. uh, our situation with meat is. So I have to check what the situation uh, with meat is. Maybe I will put them together because these are so specific and so, and it's just two markets in meats and two markets in uh, bonds. So yeah, I, I have to think about it, but definitely at least we will cover bonds, which are, are really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just putting up some thanks um, for what you've shared today. And I saw Thomas say, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not Thomas, you're Thomas. I saw Olga say, thank you. Very interesting show. I'm interested to know if Olga is going to branch out into the European markets one day. I know she's still working on the US. Will. Yeah. Uh, Ludwig, thanks for the great show. Welcome, everyone. So uh, I think that's it, Thomas. If you've got no more closing thank words, then uh, have a good week, everyone. And we'll see you at the next one in two weeks' time. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, guys. See you. Cheers. Bye-bye.